Hey guys, it's Mike here. You are watching In The Mix. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be carrying on our FL Studio Basics series and we're going to be looking at the plugin Fruity Parametric EQ2. So if you've watched our other videos, you'll know that EQ is a very important step in mixing. It's one of your biggest tools for shaping sounds in a song. And this video is just going to be breaking down the main features of Fruity Parametric EQ, hopefully showing you some tips and tricks you may or may not have seen before. And I'm also going to be highlighting a mistake I see when Fruity Parametric EQ is used, because there's a one feature of it that's a little bit hidden, and I'll show that later in the video. Just before we start, I wanted to say, in case you hadn't seen our last video, we're giving away this Mini Lab Mark II from Arturia and a few hundred pounds worth of their software as well. So once you finish this video, just click the link in the description and you can enter that giveaway for free for your chance to win that. So let's get straight into this video. So I'm going to be demonstrating this technique on our original song. I made this with Brad. This is a song on Mia Vono. It's called White Lies. You may or may not be familiar with it. And I'm just going to be demonstrating it on this pluck sound. It sounds a little bit like this. And I'm just going to be using that as we scroll through certain presets and features just so that you've got something to listen to. So to get the plugin, you simply go to the effects chain. You select Fruity Parametric EQ2. It's just down here. And it loads up like this. I'll just expand this so that, it's, so that we can see it easily. So when you open up this plugin, you have the main visualizer display that lets you see what's going on. You have uh, a row at the top which shows you where the sub, the bass, the mid and the treble regions are. You have the lowest frequencies on the left hand side of the screen, the very highest frequencies on the far right of the screen. The display goes from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, which is pretty much the range of human hearing. And you, you have these tokens. In default mode it loads up with seven tokens. You have token one and seven which are on shelving modes you have the other tokens in the middle which are on these sort of peaking modes. If at any time you sort of mess this up, you can just reset things by, by middle clicking on any of the parameters and it resets them for you. So over here you have the same controls that were available to you in this section. You can just raise the amplitude of one band, you can change the frequency of that band, and you can change the bandwidth or Q value of that band as well. And at any time you can just middle click to reset it. You also have a few features down here. This just shows you some options. You don't need to worry about those. Keep it in high quality mode. You can view or disable the band tokens. I'm just going to keep them on for now so that we can follow this easily. You have a small monitor section. This allows you to turn off the monitor, see just only the input signal or the output from the VST. So if you turn it off and I play a sound, there's nothing on the display. If I go for the input, you'll see the input. And if I go to the output, it won't look any different in this case, but if I were to do that, you can see that the input and the output look different. You also have the ability to make two different EQs, so I can do one like this, and then I can compare it to a different one, and I can flick between the two to compare them, just like that, using that button there. If you right-click on any of these band tokens, you get some options. So you get an opportunity to try different types, and I'm going to go through all of these types in just a minute, and also the order or steepness of a filter. To easily show you the different filter types, I'm just going to disable all the tokens besides one. I'm going to quickly scroll through the different sorts of filters. So the first one we have is a low pass filter, and this will allow low frequencies to pass through, so anything below the corner or cutoff frequency will be allowed through the filter. The different options available to us in the order, you can have uh, gentle filters, which sort of sweep it gently away, or you can have steeper filters. So if you selected a steep 8, and if I now compare it to the gentle one, more of the high frequencies get through with the gentle filter. So that's your low pass filter. You have the band pass filter. And this will just allow only the frequencies of this specific band through. If you scroll up and down, you can change the Q value at any time. The next type would be a high pass filter. So it's like the low pass filter, but it only lets the high frequencies through. So if I change the order to something steep, and then we compare the input to the output, you can see this is the input trace and we have lots of stuff going on in this lower region, so everything below 500. Compare it to the output, 
that stuff's all gone, it's cleaned up. The next type available to us is a band stop. So we previously looked at the band pass that allows a small range of frequencies through. The band stop does the exact opposite. It cuts out a range of frequencies. So in this case, we're listening to pretty much just bass and just high end, all the mid frequencies have been cut out. The next type would be a low shelf, which looks like this. And what this does is allows all the frequencies below the cutoff or corner frequency to be raised or lowered together. The next type of filter would be a peaking filter. When you load Fruity Parametric EQ, all the middle tokens are automatically set to be peaking filters. And you also have the high shelf, much like the low shelf, but obviously just acting on the higher frequencies that allows you to boost or lower all the high frequencies together. As usual, you can change the Q value on these to make them more gentle and usually more transparent so it sounds less filtered, or you can make them a little bit more harsh, which will generally sound a little bit more filtered. I've just reset the plugin by clicking up here and going onto the default setting. And I was gonna show you the difference between the low shelf and the high pass filters, because this is a mistake I see quite often. If, for instance, I wanted to cut the low end out of this pluck sound, and you don't always want to do that, but in this case, I want to cut the low end out, I have two options. I can either use the default setting on the high shelf and pull the low frequencies down. I'll just show you this. I'm gonna say everything below 500 I want to remove. And I'm gonna make it as steep as I can and make the filter look like this. And then I'm gonna compare the input. You can see a lot of a lot of bass frequencies if I compare the output. It looks a lot cleaner, but there's still some stuff going on there. So if I just make a new state by clicking this button, and this time, instead of using the low shelf, I'm gonna use the high pass, and I'm gonna set it to an order of steep eight, and I'm just gonna pull it across to the same frequency. So I think the frequency I had was around 500, 600. So I'm just gonna do the same thing again, pull it over to here. And this time we're gonna compare the input and output traces again. So the input trace and the output trace. And then if I compare both states and you listen closely and look at the display on the output, you can see that an awful lot more low frequencies are getting through with the low shelf. Now what I see a lot of beginners doing, and this is because I also did this myself, is when you first open this up in the default state, you just assume that to clean up low frequencies all you have to do is sweep this across. And I'm gonna show you this on the pluck sound one more time. I've just pulled it all the way over to the side and still low frequencies are getting through and that just shouldn't be possible. So often some people are trying to high pass using Fruity Parametric EQ2, but they're not keeping it on high pass. They're just using the low shelf option. Whereas if you choose high pass, especially on a steep order, it just gets rid of everything. I'm just gonna change over onto the strings so that we've got a new sound to listen to. And I'm just gonna show you an application of using EQ2. So when you're using this, it's often advisable that you do sort of gentle boosts and sort of surgical cuts. So what I mean by this is when you're trying to clean up a sound, you can do quite sharp cuts or quite big cuts and it often sounds quite natural. But if you start making really big boosts to a sound, it often starts sounding filtered and unnatural unless you've got some sort of very advanced sort of EQ going on. So I'm just going to play the strings patch and I'm going to show you what I mean. If I want to remove some frequencies, I can sort of gently do that, and it doesn't sound too unnatural. If I want to take something away, it's like a problem. It still sounds quite natural, whereas if I was to try and do some boosting now, it's probably going to start sounding very filtered. And this is what I find with uh, sort of stock EQs and parametric EQs like this, is that they do a really good job for cleaning things up. I always use them if I have resonant frequencies, like often when I record things, sort of 120 hertz tends to resonate due to sort of electrical interference. So I can often cut that all the way away with an EQ like this, and it works really well. But for boosting stuff, sometimes I prefer to use a different sort of EQ, something that's more musical or more colorful, that doesn't sound so filtered. 
um, because Parametric EQ2 is great for cleaning up things, but I don't find it's that good for boosting, but that's just my personal experience with the sort of instruments I work with. It tends to work better on electronic sounding instruments because they often sound filtered and unnatural anyway. But when I put parametric on a vocal, cello, guitar, or a piano track, I often can't get it to sound exactly the way I want, so I usually reach for a different EQ. All of the band options that I showed you earlier, you can also change them using these little selectors here. You just scroll up and down and it'll change the steep. So this takes you from steep eight all the way through to gentle eight. I can change the order just by, just by scrolling up and down here. I can also change the type of filter just by scrolling on the one above it. But I tend to like clicking on it and choosing the type by hand because then I know that I don't scroll past it or miss it. And that's pretty much everything you need to know about Fruity Parametric EQ2. The next couple of tutorials will be specific mix breakdowns for our latest song. So I'm going to be going over the vocal processing and also the processing and recording of the cello and guitar. Also going to be doing a vocal recording tutorial because that one's been requested so highly so we're finally going to get around to doing our vocal pros uh, our vocal recording tutorial brad and i have been really busy filming a music video for our latest original song that's actually unreleased uh, i'll probably just flash a little clip up here of us doing that and we're almost at a battery anyway second one let's go just go nuts Ready? yeah yeah <laughs> A loser. Yeah, let's pretend that didn't happen. I feel worse than Teresa May. <laughs> so we've been really, really busy. We're trying to do that all by ourselves whilst making the original music and these tutorials. So I cannot thank you guys enough for the support you give to us whilst we do all of this. It's really, really encouraging and heartwarming to hear all of your uh, positive responses to our music. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Keep me company. I'm gonna let my mind roll.